We need fertility to be something that you're not just doing to have babies. Fertility is something that every woman needs to be thinking about earlier, not because it is a part of her health, it's a part of her reproductive health. And, and we should see that as something that is empowering, that she can take on and, and own, not something that uh, it has any type of, of stigma associated with it. You're listening to the Almost 30 Podcast, hosted by Krista Williams and Lindsay Simsek. Almost 30 started as a conversation about the transition from our 20s to our 30s. But then we realized life is full of transitions. So we expanded our mission. We are an intuition-led, wellness-focused lifestyle podcast that promises to deliver authentic conversations, diverse points of view, and insights rooted in optimism, growth, and intention. The Almost 30 Nation community is a group of purposeful dreamers who are smart, passionate, and always seeking the full potential in every aspect of their lives. At Almost 30, we're making magic together. We dream it, and then we do it. Thanks so much for tuning into the Almost 30 Podcast. Here we go. Welcome back to Almost 30 Podcast. We're live. We're so glad you're here. So glad you're here. It's I can't hear myself. You want to just deal with it? This is oh, I can hear myself. You gotta Sorry, guys. swiggle that around a little bit. <laughs> hey, <laughs> gotta lube up the. the We're not wires experts. Here. Do you guys want to join a podcast pro program? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, but that's one of one of my tips, at least when I talk to people about podcasting, because people can get tripped up with it not being so perfect and professional, yeah. and it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, you want the quality to be great, but it's about getting it out efficiently and consistently. And it's not always going to run. I mean, how many recordings have we lost in the beginning? The beginning, beginning. Five. Yeah. That's, oh, but before do you know what we mean? were doing it for like six months, probably. So many. 70. Because we're like, oops, per forgot to press record. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I mean, it was, we were at that one shared workspace that was actually under construction and i don't think we were allowed to be there it was trespassing yeah i think <laughs> so we were trying to find a quiet space to record and so we i think it was justin's it was space and he's like he hey you there. can go in but no one was there yeah and we're like okay we can find and no one was there so all the offices were locked but then there was this one room under construction, like the, the ceiling had caved in. There was like, you know, drywall on the floor. There was like wrappers and like blunts from the construction workers on the floor. And we're like, this is a good spot. I know. And we called Jacob that day and did like a boy's perspective. Oh my God. That's fucking blast. <laughs> Dude, that was but we, that was the thing about the, we still do it now, but like the early days of just getting it done. No matter what. Just doing it. No matter what. Don't know what you're doing, but just doing it. Yeah, like <laughs> it's so weird to think about my... Again, I'm trying to have compassion for my previous self. But I'm just trying to think of what was my brain at that point? Like... <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking? Just like... what? Yeah, like what were you thinking? Like what's your thought pro... I don't know. It was like so little... Insight. I was looking at pictures of us the other day from the early days. And I mean, we're completely, I was looking at pictures. I think we were with Chloe and we like took a selfie somewhere. I don't know where we were, but I was just like, San Fran? Whoa, no, like even earlier. I don't really? even know. And it was just so early. And I was like, oh, we're completely different people. Totally. Even Chloe, too. I was like, that's probably what made me even more emotional. Aww. I was like, oh, Chloe. I know. I feel bad because. <laughs> Every, I just love Chloe so much. So whenever she talks, I just want to like laugh, but it's just because I love her. I know. It's like hard. I'm just like, oh. That's how we're going to be with our kids though. I know. When they start like saying profound things, we're going to be like. Oh, That's how I am oh, with Justin. Oh. Like, honestly, he's like, can you let me talk without laughing at me? Yeah. He's sick and I'm just cannot <laughs> stop laughing. <laughs> he's like, you're still pranking me and I'm bedridden. <laughs> oh my God. I know. Justin was in Mexico, you guys. He planned a vacation to get back at me with his friends. So, you know. Didn't work. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> he, he wouldn't say that, but you know. So he went to Mexico and he came back Sunday morning. I had been sick actually after when we got back from Saint, uh, Salt Lake City. So we were in Salt Lake City a few weeks ago and I wasn't feeling well on the way there. I wasn't feeling well at all on Tuesday when we yeah. got back from New York. 
and then just felt terrible on Thursday. So I had to get home. It was mainly stomach. It was just really painful. It was really painful in my stomach and I was exhausted. And then Justin comes back. I get better. Justin comes back Sunday and he's just sick. Our apartment oh. is just, what's up with that? It's like when you're sick, the apartment just becomes disgusting. Well, because you don't even have the energy to I, just move so a damn true. thing. And you want to just drool on the counter. Ugh, there's like Gatorade water bottles everywhere. Oh, and fuckery. It's disgusting. At least you have each other to like take, sort of take care of each other. I, Are you taking care of <laughs> I'm doing my best. I, I, I get nervous waves. about that with like, I mean, whatever, what was me, live alone. It's like, but when I'm sick, it's actually kind of scary. Yeah. Cause like, I feel bad asking people to be like, hey, <laughs> just Check monitor me. me. Yeah. But the last time I was super sick, I had a intense fever yeah, and I was bad. like, oh, I know I could die here. I know. <laughs> I mean, Justin honestly thought I was going to take the day off today. Oh, <laughs> when he was like, when I was leaving, he's like, thing. where are you going? I was like, I have interviews today. He's like, oh, really? Oh. What about the doctor? I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. I know. So I go in and out of being maternal. I'm, I'm maternal for five seconds. And then I'm like, this is fucking old. I think too, it's like because when you ever- you treat him like an actual baby. Oh, yeah. Grab my back. Schedule doctors up there. <laughs> Get me Gatorade. <laughs> and he won't, and he won't fucking, he listens to half of the shit I say and then won't listen to other. That's like, the whole thing. To, you know? Take the medicine. He, he's such a baby. He's like, I need something soft and easy to digest with my medicine. I'm like, dude, you're 200 pounds and you're 6'4". I think you're fine. <laughs> Let me make you one of my... I, give him a daily harvest. Honestly, up. I'm trying Aww. to give him concoctions and he's like... And too, I'm like, I'm like, do you want something? Like, do you want crackers? And he's like, yeah, sure. I ate the whole box. Uh-oh. Because <laughs> they're fucking Can't good. Pass through I was your like, I miss like a basic cracker. Oh, I love a saltine. I love, yeah, I love a fucking, just a basic ass cracker. I was like, these are so good. He's like, who are those for? Like, <laughs> You're like, oops. Yeah, I was like, I'm so sorry. I don't know what, because my mom used to make me saltines with peanut butter and jelly on it. And I'm like, is that even good for you when you're sick? <laughs> <laughs> I, that's so juicy. It's just Dude, like respect for that effort, man. That's With like lot. chicken noodle soup, but it's like, it's it's sweet and great, but it's like, is that even good for me? No way. Do that's, you know what that's I mean? That's the whole thing. Is you eat when you are sick, it's like no holds bar. You're gonna eat like ass. Toast with butter and Toast, cinnamon yes. and sugar was my go-to. And no. I'm like, that is dude, I had that too. Toast with cinnamon, sugar, how and butter. Good is that? Damn, that shit is so good. It was so good. So easy to digest. So delicious. Was it though? <laughs> I was you know what I did is I ordered like fucking earth bar on Postmates. It was like a $25 salad, $25 <laughs> smoothie. I was like, whatever. That was me in New York. I don't, I try to like in LA, it's hard because we just have our cars. But in New York, I remember being like, well, $85 for a, a salad and, you know, total totally. side of broccoli. I guess this that's is, the way it is. Like, this is life. This is my life. Ooh. I know, but hopefully he's going to feel better. I'm, I'm doing my best. I went and got him food three days in a row. So I'm, nice. I'm faking that I'm sweet. You are sweet. I am sweet. I just like... What's, well, was it, what I was going to say is that when you are feeling well and you have a lot of things to do, yeah. it's hard to be like... I've literally been feeling well know. for like a day and I'm already I like, well, forget it. That's what's so crazy about the body yeah. and our mind is that when you're sick, it's like you can't think about anything else. Mm -hmm. And then when you're not sick, you're like, what is that? <laughs> you I forget. Know. You're, you know, I... My compassion should be at an all-time high because I was just sick, but you know, it's not. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Feel better, Jay. I know. Penny. Yeah, Salt Lake was so fun. Just shout yes. out to Charity Lighton uh, for inviting us and having us stay at her home. And she had a beautiful event that she invited us to be a part of, which was like... 40 women from the Salt Lake area. And we were at a beautiful, her friend Susie's home. Yes, yeah, so beautiful. In Park City. It was just so stunning. Yeah, it was huge. Kelly on the team did such a great job of setting everything up and all the food. Everyone was so happy about the food Yeah, there. And yeah, it was just so beautiful to be outside for our talk. And the way that it was structured is that Lindsay led a meditation, which was really beautiful at the beginning. Charity talked for, you know, 25, probably 30 minutes about her story and some things that have really helped her to live a fearless life. So if you guys listen to the podcast episode we did with Charity, 
a few months back, it was on her journey with her husband's stage four cancer or with her husband having cancer. And right now he's stage four. So it's been, you know, a really hard journey for her. And she talked a lot about the things that she's learned through the process and it was really beautiful. And then we spoke. Yeah, it was, it was cool because as you said, like you didn't feel very well and we, it was kind of a whirlwind of a trip, but it was a good practice for us to be as, be present to the moment. And then for lack of a better word, channel kind of what we were feeling and what we were receiving from the girls in the moment. So we didn't really prepare all that much, to yeah. be honest, mm-hmm. you know, and we, we don't, we do sometimes, but we, mm-hmm. we kind of take the moment for what it is a lot of the time and it feels much better because then it's specific to the people in the room. So that was a really cool experience for us. And Salt Lake girls are just like the coolest. So sweet. Most beautiful. I loved learning about the Mormon community. Yeah. I love that. Fascinating. I'm obsessed with that. I truly enjoy learning about different types and communities of people and finding commonalities in them, finding the beautiful parts of whatever it is that they do, however it is that they live. And it was just really interesting. And also just like myth busting. Because like, as they explain and like, I mean, we're staying with Charity, who's a Mormon as well. It's like, because I have a preconceived notion or I had a preconceived notion of like Mormonism and what a Mormon family is like and their beliefs and how they just go about their day to day. I don't know. I just, I was kind of like, hey, Lens, you need to be learning about things that you might be prejudging more often. Oh, of course. Do you know what I mean? But that, exactly. But that's why when given, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what my, I didn't really have any, I've heard things, yeah. you know, I had a friend. That's that, the thing where yeah. I, I, yeah. But you know, it as, as, as everyone has heard things, but it, that's why, you know, when given the opportunity to ask someone intimately these questions, you know, you take it and then you are able to learn and, and myth bust on your own. And I think that's the most important part is to not take whatever it is that you hear for face value from anyone. Yeah. You know, exactly. And, and of course, Charity shared all this information and I take it as face value, but applying it to situations and knowing that there are parts that could be true from what I've heard from others and, you know, all of that. Yeah. It, it was, was just beautiful. beautiful. We got so to I think meet I'm Mormon. Her. Yeah, I'm <laughs> pretty sure I'm joining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, just like alone seeing kind of the family dynamic. It yes. was just beautiful. And we got to meet Sailor, her daughter. Sweetheart. Yeah, and her other, one of her boys is- Boston's in Ohio. In Ohio. What did they call that? The uh, He's on a sales, summer sales. Summer sales. <laughs> he's so doing summer sales. So in the Mormon community, they're usually really, really good at rejection and sales, you know? So yeah. a large part of being able to do sales is being able to be rejected and continue on. And within the community, they do something in addition to mission, they do something called summer sales where they go to different parts of the United States, I believe, and sell. So in this yeah. case, he was in Cleveland, Ohio, selling pest control. Like door and making door. bank, dude. Making bank, making bank. cash money. I was like, "Yo, you're in Cleveland, pest controlling." Wow, wow, That's wow. Awesome. I was a few decisions away from doing that. <laughs> I know. I was like, "How do I get there?" Honestly, to be honest, <laughs> I mean, I just know, I just know that life, you know, as a former Ohio, Ohio alum. But yeah, it was, it was really nice to hear and experience that and learn more about that. And you know, I guess what I really love about it is like. And what I've really loved about a lot of the different conversations that I've had about religion is the focus on, you know, God in your life and having that greater power and having that thing that really keeps you from um, being becoming too emotionally attached to a situation, to a person, place, or thing. And the real focus on that universal love that is all around us. And, you know, it's really... It was just really beautiful. But yeah, that event was good. And we're so thankful to do that. So Silverfern brand, they have probiotics, digestive enzymes, vegan protein. That's really bomb. I love their enzymes. And you can use code almost 30 if you want. Yeah, they've been crucial on the road. Yeah, honestly. My, my eating is sometimes a little wackadoo-doo. I know. And it helps to digest. All right. So today on the podcast, we have Afton Vetchery of Modern Fertility really important conversation and important company. 
that was founded because her and Carly Leahy, her uh, co-founder, heard a lot of buzz and panic about fertility amongst their friends, family, and just in general, the conversation among women around their age. And, you know, they weren't necessarily thinking about having kids, but they were worried like, should I be concerned about this? And so planners by nature, um, they dug in to how they could help women plan around their fertility if you're lucky enough to have a baby. Yeah. And I think what is important about this conversation is, you know, the fact that within our community, we are mostly female focused. We are women between ages that for the most part uh, would like to conceive or have conceived before. So we just wanted to get as much information as possible out there from people that have been doing research, people that are in this space, people that live, you know, eat, breathe, sleep, all of this stuff, and just provide it as information and education for you as you guys think about having children, um, hope to have children, have had children, whatever it is, we thought this would be an important, relevant conversation for you on that. Yeah, Afton was really, really knowledgeable about anything and everything relating to testing for your fertility. It Specifically, modern fertility is a comprehensive at-home fertility hormone test that you can just take at home in your jammies. And every question is answered by one of their um, reproductive health experts on their team. So it, you really feel, even though it is you know, remote, you feel taken care of as you learn more about your fertility. They also have a weekly eggnar, which is really awesome. So you can find out more about Modern Fertility at modernfertility.com. Thank you to Afton for coming on the podcast. We really appreciate, you know, sharing information about a topic that a lot of us are interested in or have been maybe avoiding thinking about, I don't know. Yeah. I think it was also interesting to just really fast just to talk about things and factors that affect fertility. So within Mm -hmm. our lives, what affects your fertility, what makes you more fertile, what makes you less. If it's a um, cultural thing, like is it a different group of people that are more fertile than others? Um, So there was just a lot of information about we as a species and we as people and we as women that are really relevant to, to all of us. Yeah. So thank you again. If this resonates with you, if this episode might resonate with your friends or family, send it along. That means so much to us when you share the episodes. And if you're called to rate and review on Apple Podcasts, that means the world to us. We'll read a review on the other side of this episode. And just a few announcements. As you know, we're on tour and we will be in San Francisco July 27th for a live show at The Independent. We cannot wait to see you there. It's going to be you know, it's, it's going to be, be magic. It's going to be a concert. It's going to be 300 of them. <laughs> we cannot wait to see you. And then we also have happening in August, a very special podcast pro workshop. So if you're interested in starting a podcast or you have a podcast and would like to monetize and grow it, this workshop is for you. It's an intensive all day a uh, special day with Lindsay and I. We have food, snacks, drinks, all of that. It's happening at Biz Babes and it's on August 17th. Yeah. So if you are friends are interested in starting a podcast or have a podcast and just want to up level, this is for you. And then starting in September, I mean, holy moly, we're in Chicago, Chicago, Ohio, Nashville, uh, DC, Philly, Miami, Australia, back to LA in December. So check out those tour dates, almost30podcast.com slash tour. We cannot wait to meet you in person. This is why we do this. Yeah. All right. Enjoy this episode. We'll see you on the other side. See you guys soon. Bye. If you're listening to this episode, the week that it comes out, we wanted to let you know that we are going to be interviewing some really cool people at the Propel Collabs Fitness Festival this weekend. We would love to see you. So on July 20th and 21st, Lindsay and I are going to be hosting 10 interviews throughout the weekend on Saturday and Sunday at Propel Collabs. So Propel Co Labs is a fitness festival. There are tons of amazing workout classes brought to you by some of the best fitness trainers in the world. There are also interviews like the ones Lindsay and I are doing. And then there are tons of other amazing activations, food and sessions throughout. And what I love about Propel is they really look at wellness from a 360 point of view, which you know we love. And so we're going to be interviewing people like Nicole Lappin, Lauren Ash of Black Girl and Ohm, Gunnar Peterson, uh, Cassie Ho, who else? 
else. It's going to be amazing. We <laughs> so cannot many. wait. There are also musical performances by people like Sierra, Charlie XCX, uh, Lucy Hale, Chromio. We didn't plan that, <laughs> uh, but it's going to be a freaking blast. So we would love to see you at Propel Co Labs Fitness Festival this July 20th and 21st in Santa Monica. Come say hi and get tickets at Propel Co Labs. Dot com. And you'll also meet other members of Almost 30 Nation for sure. So you'll make friends. Don't be afraid to come alone. We love you and can't wait to meet you. Maybe something happened when you were a little, like maybe at the doctor or yeah, something probably, that freaked you out. We're talking about my trauma related to <laughs> needles. <laughs> I, and my sister is in the medical field. Yeah. Mm. She's unfazed by yeah. anything. Anything. Well, I think it's also important that you just, you know that about yourself, you accept it. And it's not something you judge yourself about. It's just like, okay, this is a thing. Like yeah. mm-hmm. if I need to measure something through my blood, I'm going to figure out if I mm-hmm. want to do that or not, like how big is the barrier? And then there are so many other ways to think about it. So instead of, you know, I'm going to prick myself, I'm going to get my good friend to, to mm-hmm. do it for yeah. me and focusing on, you know, the information that's above that because it is an emotional experience. And so what we found is, you know, around collecting the sample and these results. Okay, you know, before you had to go take time off work, go into a lab, figure out that whole experience. It's just mm-hmm. this, this whole coordination process. And so when we take that and just put it into a little box and let you do it, we're taking a part of that away, but it's still emotional. And so there can be so many things baked into the experience. And it's just, it's important to understand how you feel about it and everything's okay. Yeah. Mm. I remember my mom used to smile anytime she had blood drawn or anything happened. She's really? like, she'd be, like to be like an example. I'm like, okay, mom. All right. Anyway, we're not talking about blood anymore. She's going to gaggle over the table. Sorry. I'm going to die. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It is the like very deep reaction. Yeah. It's okay. I need help. <laughs> Definitely no, before you have babies. Trauma. Honestly, actually, literally I thought about that with the epidural's fine because it's in my back and I can't see it. Yeah. But I've thought about that with getting blood. Like anytime I've had to do that, honestly, it's a it's a it's a really big thing. Shots, I'm kind of fine, but there's something about the blood and I can't do it. Mm. I don't know. It's, I can find to see it, but I don't know. Maybe it's the mermaid. It's just a temple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a temple. Anyways. Oh. So glad you're here. So Thank glad. you so much for having me. I am so excited to be here. Oh, I mean, down. I loved, you know, when I got to talk to Carly like a few months ago about modern fertility, you know, at first we get we get approached by a lot of companies about a lot of different testing. And I've never actually considered or known that you could test your fertility. And as someone that has been on birth control, you know, from 14 until 24... And understanding and learning about the different ways in which fertility can be affected through various things and stressors that happened in our lives. I didn't necessarily think about the fact that you could test your fertility. So we had such a great conversation and I love your guys' story and what you guys stand for. So I would love, you know, to start there for you to introduce yourself and kind of tell us a little bit more about modern fertility and how it came to be. Yeah. So I'm so glad that you got to to chat with my co-founder, Carly. And uh, yeah, I guess just to, to take a step back and talk about Modern Fertility. So Modern Fertility is a women's health company focused on making fertility information more available to women earlier in life. And so the way that we do this is we take the same laboratory tests done in an infertility clinic. Typically when a female or couple is having trouble getting pregnant, we take those same tests out of the clinic and make them available to, to women in a much easier to access format and a simple test they can take from the comfort of their own home and their PJs in the morning. And so uh, we, we really started the company as a fertility information company. We felt like the conversation around fertility was very reactive as opposed to, to proactive. And you know, as you said, millennials are waiting longer than any other generation in the history of the US to start their families. And when we have this generation uh, that has spent the majority of their lives on birth control and thinking about how to prevent print, pregnancy and how our entire medical system and education system is focused on prevention, all of a sudden we get to the point where we're 
maybe not thinking about prevention anymore, maybe thinking about having a family, maybe not, uh, but we just haven't been educated about fertility. We haven't been educated about our reproductive health. And we know the science stands at at a place where there are better predictors of future fertility than just age alone. And so Modern Fertility set out really, and, and we started it, to make that information as easy to access as, as possible. And just so our listeners understand, how exactly does the test work and what does it test for? And what information can they kind of take away so that they're empowered looking at their fertility on a whole? Yeah. So the way that it works is women come to our site, modernfertility.com. They request a test and they can either go to... They use code almost 30. They they use code (laughs) almost 30. Uh, And they can either go to a Quest Diagnostics facility in 47 states or test from the comfort of their own home. We have a simple finger prick test uh, where as a company we uh, brought to to market the most comprehensive test you could take at home. Uh, We did this by running a clinical study and publishing it in a peer-reviewed medical journal. We were actually reviewed, uh, that that journal was reviewed in the New England Journal of Medicine a few weeks ago. And so really just keeping our our bar for scientific credibility just so, so high. Uh, So you can choose either of those options. After you provide the sample in uh, a few days, you get your results. Back. And what that includes is uh, results on between one and eight hormones, dependent on the type of hormonal birth control, if any, that you're taking, and helping you understand and, and check in and get a baseline on where your fertility hormones are today. And so when you take a step back and look at fertility hormones, you can kind of think about them as your fertility detectives. So there's no t- predictor of you know when you sh- need to start to try to have a family and there's no total predictor of if you're going to be able to have a child successfully, but there are these fertility detectives that can help you understand things like red flags, uh, success in IVF or egg freezing if you were to consider it, uh, age of menopause onset, which is really important to understand as we're waiting until later in our reproductive careers to consider even starting our families and a host of other hormones that just have uh, high implications for our overall reproductive health, which is really a window into our broader health. So you're looking for those, yeah. So through things. this okay. uh, spe- this this finger prick or a, a traditional blood, blood draw, we test uh, the eight hormones that we look at are anti malarian hormone (AMH), follicle stimulating hormone (FSH), estradiol, prolactin, testosterone, uh, thyroid, free thyroxine. It, it's really this this comprehensive snapshot. Uh, birth control does uh, impact some of those hormones, so we don't measure the ones that birth control. Uh, can can impact, but we still are able to measure some of them and help you just check in and get a baseline on where your fertility is today. And then we help you monitor that year over year. The clinical recommendation is to retest your fertility every nine to 12 months, depending on your age. And so unfortunately, fertility does decline with age. Uh, we're born with all the eggs we're ever going to have at, at birth. And that number goes to zero at menopause. And so by understanding you know, where you are along the way, you have, you have more clues, you have more information to make the decisions that are right for you. Mm. And, and so is it telling you not how many eggs you have, obviously, but like the kind of health of your egg supply? Great question. So one of the hormones that we test for is anti-malarian hormone, AMH. And so AMH... Why malarian? Uh, oh gosh, I... Like, isn't malaria a disease? Oh, malarian. So it's... Uh, that's a good question. I'm not actually sure why it's called AMH. Yeah. I'm sure that there's a reason. Yeah. I, like I, I wonder why our... it's anti-malarian and why there's malaria. So I know... I, I think it's different... I think it's different from malaria and it's just a yeah. sounds the, the same, but yeah, let me get back to you on, I'm on that one. Look that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. if we're talking malaria, yeah. that's kind of, <laughs> if we're talking malaria, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> uh, so um, we, yeah, so AMH, um, I have a, a fun, or not a fun, an interesting story around finger prick tests and malaria that we can, we can come back to, but very separate <laughs> AMH. Uh, so AMH is a hormone that's secreted by the cells that surround the follicles in your ovaries. And basically every follicle in your ovary 
uh, most of them contain an egg. And so by measuring the amount of AMH in your bloodstream, you're able to have a proxy of how many eggs you have in your ovaries. And so we look at that as ovarian reserve. Mm -hmm. And so what we're able to help you understand is for your age, do you have an an average number of, of eggs or not? And when you look at whether you have uh, a really, really high number of eggs or really, really low, both of those have clinical implications. And so we provide wellness information. We don't give medical advice, but what we do is inform you on what this hormone is, how much of it you you have, and help you have a more informed conversation for your doctor. So uh, let's talk about a really, really high number of eggs. So if you have a lot of eggs in your ovaries, uh, often that is correlated with a condition called PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which uh, today... Sorry, if you repeat that, go a little bit slower. Yeah. So PCOS, Mm -hmm. um, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Uh, So today doctors diagnose PCOS using something called the Rotterdam criteria. And so what this is, is just a checklist. And so they're looking at, um, you know, excessive facial hair. They're looking at weight gain. They're looking at other factors to, to diagnose this, this condition. Um, it's really important to diagnose this condition because what it means and some of the side effects are you could be, let's say you're not on hormonal birth control, you could be anovulatory, which means you're not ovulating. And if you're not ovulating every month, you're basically, you have a lot of estrogen that's building up and having that free estrogen floating around in your your ovaries is it, it leads to, to endometrial cancer and other just really important conditions. And so uh, one thing the, the kind of medical guidelines say that AMH can be used as part of diagnosing PCOS. And, and we think that that's really important today because we know in the healthcare system, it's women aren't listened to. When you're just looking at this checklist, there's a lot of times where women aren't getting the information that they they need to address these types of symptoms. And so AMH is just another detective. It's a, it's a hormone detective to help create this broader picture. So PCOS is on one end. And then on the other end, let's say that uh, you have an, an undetectable level of AMH. So so yeah. a high level of AMH leads to more likelihood of PCOS. So it doesn't lead to more likelihood. It's just correlated, correlated. with. So if you have a really... So I have... Uh, I started tracking my fertility about uh, three years ago. And I my AMH level at that time was, was 14. And I was diagnosed uh, by a doctor with PCOS because I had... Uh, some of the PCOS criteria, but I wasn't a typical case. And so I they were able to use my AMH level combined with some of the symptoms I was showing to give me that diagnosis. And what that means is that when down the line, when I am, if I choose to start a family and try to get pregnant, uh, my ovulation is irregular. And so timing intercourse to when I'm actually trying to get pregnant, like that's going to be hard for me, but there's medication that can address that. And so Mm -hmm. going into the process with armed with this information about my own body I I can start to use that to make the decisions that are right for me. So that that was a really, really empowering piece of, of information to have. I've gotten to the point at 31 where I've done enough research and I've spent enough money on stupid shit beforehand that really didn't improve my health to know that spending money on things, products, food, drinks, anything that will help me be a healthier person so that I won't have medical bills later in life because I didn't take care of my health is so worth it, truly. And for me, Athletic Greens is, I'm just so grateful that I found it. I have it every single day when I wake up. It is the first thing that I put into my body. This is the ultimate daily all-in-one supplement. It's just a habit that I, I don't know, it just makes me feel energized. Um, I've been dealing with a lot of brain fog recently and it's helped with my brain fog. And what I'm so impressed by is the 75 proven vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients that are in this mix. They obsessively research so that you can feel your best every single day. And the comprehensive formula 
it has all of these things in it, bioavailable ingredients in it, because everyone is different. And this formula helps you adapt as your daily needs change and you know change due to stress, sleep patterns, the imperfect diet. So it's just such a dynamic, comprehensive blend. This is gluten-free, gluten dairy-free, paleo, keto, and vegan-friendly. And it's just my favorite thing right now. It's 100% pure New Zealand made, which I love too. So if you're wanting to improve your health in these five core areas, Athletic Greens is for you. So the first, nervous system and immune support. Vitamins and minerals are essential for thousands of biochemical reactions and functions of the body. And this is really the perfect blend to help support that. Or maybe you need a little boost in your digestion, gut health, and liver support. They have high quality prebiotics and probiotics that provide effective immune system support. Uh, maybe you have low energy, so this will help you with your energy production and storage. And this blend has essential minerals and fatty acids for the management of blood sugar levels, which will help with that energy. Or perhaps you'd like to improve your hormone health. Neural and adaptogen support is definitely important and something that we might not think about as having a play in feeling good every day. And so this blend has adaptogens that are amazing class of herbs that respond to influences like stress and can aid in normalizing sleep patterns and lowering everyday physical and mental fatigue. And lastly, antioxidants and superfoods to support healthy aging. Hey y'all, we're not getting any younger. So let's put things in our body that help support our health and do not put stress on the body so that it ages. So these antioxidants in the blend are known to counteract the impact of free radicals, which are highly unstable molecules that can cause cell damage within the body. Let's stop this. <laughs> and what I love is that they will answer any questions you might have. So go to athleticgreens.com slash almost 30. And with your purchase, you'll get 20 free travel packs, which are great on the road if you're needing to bring them to work. It's so, so helpful. I have like five in my purse at all times. And that's a $79 value, major, major. So athleticgreens.com slash almost 30 will get you 20 free travel packs, which is a value of $79. See what subscription works for you. This is something that I feel is really, really important and integral to my health, to feeling good every day, to being able to do what I love. So let us know what you think, athleticgreens.com slash almost 30. I have recommended this brand to everyone that I love because I love it so much. Birch Benders is an incredible brand that makes pancake and waffle mixes. I mean, say no more. Like how good does a pancake make you feel? And all you have to do is just add water. It has it all in it. So it's convenient, delicious, and the quality of the ingredients are so, so good. They have scoured the earth for the finest natural and non-GMO ingredients and have obsessed over every recipe to ensure, honestly, that they are perfect and they are. And recently, I just placed an order order actually last night. I got the new plant protein pancakes. I got my favorite, the banana paleo. That's my number one. And then I also got the gluten-free mix as well as the protein pancake. So these are pancakes that I make either in the morning, I'll top it with like some almond butter and bananas, or I'll make it at night for like a little treat. I never feel guilty. I never feel so stuffed and disgusting. This brand does it right. I just can't get enough. And what I love too is that this brand was started by a husband and wife. So they just graduated from college, moved to Colorado, got married, and they got to cooking. And they set out to create a company with a goal of combining quality, convenience, and incredible taste. And they did it. And we're just so proud to be partners with a brand like Birch Benders. They also have toaster waffles available at 
a specific store. So check their website, birchbenders.com. You can order the pancake and waffle mixes from the website. I highly recommend. The price is so right. And for our listeners, you get 30% off your first order. I recommend stocking up, say getting like five or six mixes and just trying out and seeing what you love and let us know. Join the secret Facebook group. This brand is delish, delish. Can I say it one more time? Love you guys. Birchbenders.com. Use the code almost 30 for 30% off. So the for PCOS, because yeah. I know there's a lot of people in our community who have PCOS or have symptoms of. So yeah. is there like a definitive test that, because you're saying like they're looking at the symptoms and they're like, oh, you have PCOS. And it's like, is there a, um, sorry, what do you call it when you kind of like, not a sonogram, but. Yeah. Sonogram. So, it, it's, yeah. Uh, so often they use an AFC, an andro follicle count, which is like a transvaginal ultrasound. So oh, okay. I've, yeah, yeah I've they're looking okay. and seeing if you have, you know, cysts on your ovaries as part of that. And so, uh, you know, I was in a fertility clinic getting my PCOS diagnosis. And so that was something that they used again to have more clues about my diagnosis. But yeah, for, for PCOS, you know, the treatment for PCOS is hormonal birth control. Mm. So if you have PCOS, often doctors will recommend that you go on hormonal birth control to, to regulate some of the these other factors. But then if hormonal birth control is masking all of your PCOS-like symptoms, when you stop hormonal birth control, then what? So our, our system, our medical system today uh, just has some gaps around what that whole transition period looks like. And when you have, when you are your own best health advocate, when you have this information about your hormone levels and where you stand, you can start to to use that to, to guide some of these other decisions and just make sure that that you know what's what's going on. So you went in, you had the symptoms of PCOS. Then they did the, they went inside and looked for cysts on your ovaries with the... So my uh, my diagnosis of, of PCOS was I uh, got my hormone test done. I uh, had this sky high AMH. Uh, for me, it was actually before I got an AFC uh, when I, I was in a okay. fertility clinic. So they were combining that. I had you know a, a few of the symptoms of yep. the the Rotterdam criteria, but based on this particular clinician's opinion, they looked at the two together and, and gave me that diagnosis. Mm. Yeah, so it was it was Sorry, really the Rotterdam criteria one more time. Yeah, so the Rotterdam criteria. So there Okay. So for some conditions in healthcare, you are using, you know, a blood test to say like do you have this or do you not have this? But in other conditions of healthcare, you're looking at a, a checklist to say um, you know, do are the the symptoms here, you know, do I I have the yes. the diagnosis for it. So the Rotterdam criteria is today the checklist that's used okay. to diagnose PCOS. And so there are, on that checklist, there's things like excessive weight gain because body PCOS hair, feels facial hair. body hair, facial hair. And so these factors today are used to diagnose PCOS, but there are all of these rare phenotypes. So these different physical representations of what PCOS might be. So I'm a, a, a rare phenotype. I, I don't have the typical manifestation of PCOS. So a doctor seeing me walk walking down the street, you know, you talk to fertility clinics and they see women come in the door and they're like, oh, they they know when they walk in the door that PCOS might be something they're, they, they have. I was an atypical case. And so AMH helped me as a part of my overall diagnosis. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And it's malarian, M-U, and yes. malarious, It has M-A. like the, the umlaut yeah, over like the, the yes. U. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they're Is umlaut the word? The, uh, the two dots? You. Yeah. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> like molarian with two dots instead of malarian. Yeah. So that's And difference. so it's just, it's this, this really powerful kind of detective. And then on the other side of that, so let's say there's some women, and again, this is, this is not good or bad. It's just where your body is that have an undetectable level of AMH. So, you know, one in a hundred women today have a condition that's called premature ovarian insufficiency, which can lead to a lot of other health conditions. And, and one in a hundred is a, a fairly significant amount. But the issue with POI is that it um, fertility is one of the side effects of that condition. So POI means that you basically, you know how AMH secreted by your follicles, you it's used to just see how many follicles you have in your eggs. And we talked about before, you're born with all the eggs you're ever going to have at birth. And that goes to zero by menopause. So let's say you're 30 years old and you have... 
uh, an undetectable level of AMH in your blood, that means you have just not that many or, or you know zero eggs in your ovaries at that time. And so what that can lead to is an earlier onset menopause. It leads to other types of cardiovascular health conditions. Just all of these things where it just is so important uh, as a, a woman to understand these these red flags and today in our healthcare system, because having a baby is not a right, it's a privilege. There is no universal screening for POI. There are no symptoms of POI until you get into the menopausal transition. And so, and even then, if you're going through the menopausal transition in your mid thirties, like that, that's, it, it, it's complicated to get the answers and, and information that that is actually what's happening. So, it is still possible to conceive if you have POI. There's, you know, spontaneous ovulation, so there might be an egg that that you ovulate, and as all you need for a child is, is one egg and and one sperm, and mm-hmm. uh, that the odds exist. But it is just so important to have to give women the option to understand more about their overall reproductive health. These types, th- this information, which can give you more and inf- more context on these types of of conditions. So the, the, in that case, that person has a very low, they have zero AMH. So modern fertility could test for that. And it would tell you if you have a zero AMH. Yeah. So we'll tell you what your AMH level is. And okay. so we, we go, uh, we call it kind of an undetectable AMH level. So the, the assay, the machine that we use to measure AMH can only measure up to a certain degree. So if you're below the limit of assay detection, you fall in that category and we have customized age and result specific content that helps you understand everything that 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 means because if you are you know <laughs> that that level is very very different for a 30 year old versus a 50 year old then yeah. <laughs> where where that might be expected yeah so the the content that is you know given depending on your test results can you give us some examples of that does it span nutrition and maybe further tests to do or, you know, any alternate, you know, recommendations in terms of conceiving and all of that? Yeah, yeah. So the way that we developed our content was doing an extensive, extensive, extensive review of all of the fertility literature in peer-reviewed medical journals. And so we started there uh, to give you a context of what that looks like. There's about 6,500 publications that come out a year that relate to fertility and about 3,500 of those are in top medical journals. Uh, From there, we started meeting with reproductive endocrinologists. So those are fertility doctors. It's the the special subspecialty on top of becoming an OBGYN. We spoke with OBGYNs, reproductive psychologists, primary care physicians, just leading experts all across the US and world to also layer on that context. And so we combine that with all of the peer-reviewed medical journal and built out uh, this whole system that allows women to have age and results specific information on all of the hormones that we test. Uh, And what's really interesting there is, you know, when you go to one doctor, you're getting, you know, one Opinion, and when you think about where fertility is today, uh, the, I guess to, to give you some context, there are only 500 infertility clinics in the U.S., and there are only 2,000 infertility infertility. Okay, so there are only 500 infertility clinics in the U.S., and there are only 2,000 reproductive endocrinologists. So when you think about uh, fertility today, and that subspecialty, that that type of information that's locked inside of that clinic, making its way to half the population that there are some challenges that that can happen and yeah. just the the communication of that information. And so what we tried to to do with all of this con- content is take all of that information not just from one doctor or one OBGYN but from everyone and build out these comprehensive reports where as modern fertility we're not making a call on uh you know what is what is right or wrong we're telling you exactly where the science is and even on some of these elements that are more controversial we're saying hey the science is still outstanding here here's the argument for both sides it's like you you can use this to make the decision that's right for you so from there that that's kind of the content and the customized content that we have on each of these reports uh, we also are able to combine some of the content, some of these hormones act together. And so we're able to give more information on how they act together. Uh, to your question about lifestyle recommendations, uh, we do talk about the well-established lifestyle recommendations. So for example, 
Uh, there have been clinical studies that show if you stop smoking, your AMH can actually increase. Uh, diet and weight also mm-hmm. plays a role in, in AMH. And so we give a very scientifically sound uh, kind of snapshot of, of where, how you can take action based on your results. Uh, so, so yes, uh, all of those things. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. Great. I wanted to ask quickly about um, something you said about ovulation. So yeah. if you don't ovulate, are you not releasing eggs? Correct. And therefore more eggs are being stored? No. Or so, so you, like, how does that work? What's yeah, that correlation? So the way, so every month um, you have all of these eggs uh, that are at a certain stage of development in your ovaries. And every month, uh, if you're not on hormonal birth or not on certain types of hormonal birth control, one of those that's at a particular phase is selected and starts to, to grow. Um, it's, it's released into the fallopian tombs. This is an abbreviated summary for, for any scientists that are, are listening. <laughs> uh, one of those is selected, it grows, you ovulate, and then all of the other it, eggs uh, that are uh, that are in your ovaries at the time are shed with your menstrual cycle. And so when you're born with all of the eggs you're ever going to have at birth, and that goes down to, to zero at menopause, there, there's nothing that we can do to slow down that decline. Wow. So that's the, I know the stuff is fascinating, isn't it? Because yeah, because I'm thinking <laughs> about girls because we know a lot of people that don't have their period. Yeah. Uh, so do they not have their period because they're on birth control or do they not no. have their period without birth control? I think there's a combination yeah. of both, yeah. so but with, uh, like either, yeah, they haven't had it in like six months and it's like, hmm. Or, or yeah. years. Yeah. Years, yeah. What so would you say to both of those? Yeah, so it's normal for certain types of birth control to not get your menstrual cycle. So that's totally normal. We have some amazing content on our blog about that. So that is uh, expected. Is it, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Is it, it's normal according to those types of birth control, but is it normal for the body? Like, is that okay? So for the studies that have been done today that have been made available, some of those by the birth control company and some not, uh, mm. it, it is okay. Uh, there, there is no biological reason that we have to have a menstrual cycle every month. Mm. Yeah. Which is interesting. It, it's uh, the cultural norms around this are, are really interesting as well. So uh, in the U.S., that kind of like makes us feel a little bit weird. Yeah. Uh, but in in Asia, it's it's very um, it's accepted and it's seen as a benefit of birth control that you don't get your menstrual cycle. So yeah, the the science around that is is interesting. Uh, if you don't get your period and you are not on hormonal birth control, that's something where I would I would definitely recommend that. Uh, those women have a conversation with their their doctor. Uh, fertility hormones can be a part of that discussion, uh, but but that's that's important to to chat through. Mm-hmm. What are the fertility hormones? Oh, the fertility hormones that we test for. Oh, okay, <laughs> so okay, okay. if uh, yeah, you're not on hormonal birth control, uh, taking the modern fertility test can hopefully arm that conversation with your doctor with more information. These are also tests that your doctor can order. That's how. I started out was asking my doctor for the these types of of tests. Uh, they were hard to access, uh, and then I got a bill in the mail for fifteen hundred dollars. Again, with this whole thing in the U.S. with uh, having a baby not be a right but a privilege, it uh, even if your insurance plan or let's say your employer happens to cover infertility treatment, which is amazing and they they should be, uh, it it you still have to be trying to conceive for between nine and 12 months, depending on your age and where you fill, fill into these guidelines. And you have to document it in order to get this type of testing reimbursed, which is ridiculous. Like, what does that oh, mean? Oh, so you have to like you take a journal try. like we tried last You have night. to document it in the medical record Wow. <laughs> of when you and your partner and like, how does it even work? If your partner is female, like nobody yeah. knows. And so part of just access is something that is is so important to us. And in today's day and age, like we need fertility to be something that you're not just doing to have babies. Fertility is something that every woman needs to be thinking about earlier, not because it is a part of her health. It's a part mm-hmm. of her reproductive health. And, and we should see that as something that is empowering that she can take on and, and own, not something that uh, it has any type of, of stigma associated with it. And that's kind of where we, we, we stand along the, the guidelines. Because your reproductive health or your, your you know, status of where you are in your fertility is, could also affect other aspects of your health. You mentioned like a cardiovascular, cor- like 
Yeah, your yeah. Cardiovascular health. So when you you think about you know some of these conditions like POI, premature ovarian insufficiency, it affects one in a hundred women. Uh, one of the the symptoms of POI are having these cardiovascular issues as you're going through the menopausal transition. So menopause is this amazing, crazy thing that every single one of us we are going to go through it. Yet we're not we're not talking about it. So in the US, the average age of menopause onset for American women is 51 years old. You start to lose your fertility and go through the menopausal transition on average about 10 years before that. So when you think about a 40-year-old today, uh, they can definitely still have a, a baby, but it's not... It's not everyone. It's still a, it's a big deal if if someone is is forty and or or later and, and has a child. Uh, but let's say that uh, you're going through menopause at forty seven as opposed to fifty one. Then at thirty seven, your body's starting to go through that transition of what we have in our minds for someone that's forty years old. And when you think about the the modern woman today that might has all of these other priorities and is trying to to make these types of decisions, maybe this isn't impactful for uh, child number one, but it could be two or or three. So how how does all of this information interact together? And uh, that's kind of part of the reason I know um, we sent this to you guys, our, our timeline tool. <laughs> I love the timeline tool. Yeah, can <laughs> and, you talk about that? Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, the timeline tool was really, so we want there to be a predictor of fertility. It would be amazing if you could uh, just press a button and understand exactly where your your body was. Uh, but unfortunately, that doesn't exist. And we're m- making the, the tools that we have to, to check in on that more accessible. Um, but what we really wanted to, to do is just take that a step further and understand uh, w- I wanted for myself to understand for the number of kids that I wanted, how that would map out against when I wanted to start. So I think it's really easy to be like, oh, I don't want kids or, oh, maybe I want two, maybe I want three, but actually doing the math and saying, oh, I want to start at 35. It takes, I have to carry for nine months. And then I probably want, you know, their CDC recommendations around interbirth intervals. I probably want this much time between what is kids. The, how much, what's suggested? Uh, two years or from the time of the the first um, conception. Conception. Oh, oh okay. So yeah. like it would be nine months and then waiting. Waiting a couple and like, then... Basically, you can plug in, you know, when you might want to start yeah. the number of kids that you want. And we help you understand just what success rates look like at every year. And so it's it's just this empowering piece of information that exists. The literature is out there for what these success rates look like. Again, they're percentages. So it, it's not going to be what your success rate is, but at least it's a data point. At least it's better than your grandmother saying and asking you all of these questions around you know, when when are you going to, to start trying? It's, it's data that you can have to, to start to understand just what all of these odds look like mm-hmm. as as we're living in a society that, that's different where you're you're trying to make these these other types of decisions. And sometimes your girl doesn't want to cook or leave her apartment. And with no food in my apartment, (laughs) that can be a really hungry time. But I actually, last night, I ordered some true food on DoorDash. So I can always depend on DoorDash to have the restaurants that I'm craving, whether it's super healthy, vegan, or if I want just like a really freaking delicious burger, anything you want, and they're brought right to your door. So, you know, if you are not wanting to cook or maybe you had a long day at work or a tough day at school or you're stuck at the office, like wherever you are, you can treat yourself to a meal on demand from your favorite restaurant. Ordering is super, super easy. You just use your DoorDash app and choose what you want to eat and a dasher will bring it to you anywhere you are. And I have to say, they're all so, so nice and accommodating. Like if you want it brought to your door, if you want to go out and meet them, like they're just so lovely. So don't sleep on DoorDash. Right now, our listeners can get $5 off their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter promo code ALMOST30 at checkout. That's $5 off your first order when you download the DoorDash app from the App Store and enter promo code ALMOST30. You've been hearing Krista and I talk about how we smell... (laughs) 
<laughs> whether you're in the group or on the podcast. I don't know. We've just been running around. It's hard to remember to make ourselves smell nice. <laughs> but also, we're pretty picky when it comes to perfumes because a lot of perfumes are toxic. And your skin is your largest organ and it is absorbing what you put on top of it and it goes directly into your bloodstream. So that's why we're so excited to be working with Fleur, P-H-L-U-R. They make stunning non-toxic perfumes and list all of their ingredients online. You get a good scent made with clean ingredients and the sample process, which is like you get a bunch of samples, is just really, really fun. Like you can have one in your purse and then like one you spritz in your, like on yourself in your bathroom before you like meet up with friends for a drink. I don't know, whatever you want. It's just fun to try out different scents because sometimes I'm feeling more floral. Sometimes I'm feeling more unisex. You know what I mean? Um, So if you're in the market for luxurious perfume, that's all about the good clean, fun, try Fleur, P-H-L-U-R. And what's so fun is that Krista and I created a custom sample set for y'all and we're so excited about it. You know, I, I, as I said, I kind of like a floral one day and then I like a really like earthy, musty, delicious, warm scent another day. So you know, whatever you're feeling, if you want to try ours or if you want to create your own sample set, you can go to flur.com slash almost 30. That's P H L U R.com slash almost 30 to get 20% off a sample set. Again, this is non toxic. I mean, get with it. So, in our picks, just to tell you, we have Moab, which is like a really delicious unisex scent. The Ciano, which is more floral. And then Greylock. It's really clean. Think of like being outside in a freaking forest. It's just delicious. So check out Fleur.com slash almost 30 for 20% off a sample set. So in the timeline tool, you input your... If you're on birth control, right? In your age, or what do you input in the timeline tool? Yeah, so you just you put in your age okay. uh, today, the age that you want to have your first or next child, the number of kids that you want to to have, and then you can toggle that inner birth interval if you want to make it like have them be really close or further. No right or wrong answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then on the timeline, it populates when you would have those potential children and the risk, uh, your the percentage chance of being able to have a child successfully at those ages, along with the percentage rate of miscarriage and Down syndrome, which is just this something that we don't talk about as much as we should. Like mm-hmm. miscarriage is very, very normal. <laughs> and by starting to visualize these things, you can start to, to just understand how p- age plays a role in, in all of this. And then we have another part of the tool where you can also start to understand how each of these hormones play a role in these different aspects of, of fertility. So for example, one of the the hormones that we test plays a role in the um, understanding your your uterine lining, and so if your uterine lining can't support uh, an egg and or a fertilized egg and planting in it, then th- there's going to be issues down the line. So just how hormones as your fertility detectives play a role in in all of this, whether you're trying to have kids or or not. Wow, does any of that play a role in like if people wanted to explore IVF? Yeah. So what's really interesting for for egg freezing and and IVF is uh, it, so it's a, let's talk about egg freezing to start. I think egg freezing is an amazing procedure, but it's not right for everyone. The fact that we can do it is is great, but it's, it's not an insurance policy. It just, it changes the odds. And I think that there's a lot of misinformation out there where it's like, oh, if I just freeze my eggs, like that's it. Like I'm fine. Uh, but what's interesting is for every, at, at different ages, there's basically a target number of eggs that you should look to freeze to have the, the max odds of having that frozen egg 
turn into a successful live birth mm. or, or child. And so uh, by looking at the amount of AMH in your blood, it's a proxy of how many eggs you have in your ovaries. And so what's happening in the egg freezing procedure is instead, remember we talked about before that like one egg that was was ovulating. So in egg freezing, you inject yourself with hormones over a, a few week period. You're growing not just that one egg that's going to ovulate, you're growing all of the eggs that are present in your ovaries at that time. And then at the end of the procedure, they take this little straw, they suck out all of the, the mm-hmm. eggs, and then they free, flash freeze them in a process called vitrification. And then down the road, you would come back to them, fertilize them with a sperm, um, and then IVF is basically the, the second half of, of that procedure. And so by looking at your AMH levels, you can start to understand how many eggs you might harvest during that procedure. And that can influence whether you might get to that target number of eggs in just one procedure, or if you'll have to do multiple procedures to get to that target egg number, which is something that can be expensive. (laughs) There's emotionally taxing, emotional hormone, that level of hormones in your body. (laughs) There are so many, I, I could... We could have a whole separate podcast on on egg freezing. But I, I think, again, amazing procedure. Just women need to be informed. And so where we see modern fertility coming in is there's a lot of information floating around a lot out there. Egg freezing is largely something that, that people still pay for out of pocket. So it's really important that you're going into those conversations armed with the right information, the ability to ask the right questions so that we can go in and, and get the decisions or, and make the decisions that are right for you and, and mm-hmm. where that kind of unbiased source that you can start with to really empower yourself with information about your body. Can you share um, testimonials from people that have used modern fertility? Are you able to oh, do that yeah. anonymously? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. Um, I can tell you about a call I, I had a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I... <laughs> So I got an email. So if you go to modernfertility.com, I I have my own fertility results available on our website. So I I truly believe that this type of testing needs to be as routine as a pap smear and that our reproductive health, it's just, it's a part of our health. It's not good or bad. So I I put my results out there and uh, you can download them and they're sent from my email. So you can reply to that email and I'll I'll get it. So I got this uh, email from from one of our, or, or just a woman that had downloaded the report. And she's like, hey, Afton, can we hop on a call? And I was like, oh, uh, like, okay, uh, sure. And so we got one scheduled a couple of weeks later. I had no idea if this was going to be good or bad. Um, and she's like, you know, uh, so I, I started, I saw saw you guys on Instagram. Um, you know, one of, one of my friends like, posted about you. And so I just started following your brand and like reading your blog content. And so our blog content has all of this. um, We just, we take the questions that we're getting from women and then we go ask like a lot of doctors and we consolidate just like, okay guys, like where's the science today? And she was like, I started reading all of these articles. And then she was like, I started thinking about my fertility again uh, for the the, the first time. And she was like, you know, back when I was in college, I I decided I didn't want to have kids. And she and I'm a pretty strong willed person. Uh, and so I just I never thought back to that decision. And she was like, you know, following your brand uh, just made me realize that i I should just think about this. Nobody in my life, no doctor was telling me to think about this. And so what I realized is that this was just a conversation I needed to have with myself. So I, I ended up ordering your test and I, I took it because I wanted to be the one that was in charge of, of making that decision. I didn't want my own biology to be making it for me. And that to me, ugh, it just, it gave me chills because to me, the reason that our company exists is to prompt this dialogue. The reason our company exists is to just tell women that fertility is something that that is you have the right to understand. And we want to redefine how we're thinking about fertility. It's not about babies. It's about our health. And to me, the the best stories are just how the fact that our company exists in a way to make the science accessible influences just the the decisions you might make about how you're you're going to spend your life. And and that to me is is just the the coolest thing about being in this space. Mm, love that. And you mentioned earlier miscarriages. So I feel like, I don't know if it's social media, but I feel like I've heard of so many, and I've, I guess my friends now, and I'm coming to the point where people are starting to get pregnant, they're having children. And I've heard of so many people that I know that have had miscarriages. And I, you know, maybe back then I wasn't in the conversation about pregnancy and giving birth, but I don't know if that number is increasing or we're just now talking about it or what do you, what do you think about that? 
Yeah, that that's a great question. I don't have data on if the rate of miscarriage is increasing. And I don't know uh, because this is largely something that a lot of women don't even know if they've miscarried um, and uh, just the mechanisms to record all of this. I'm, I'm just not aware of, of studies that are, are happening around this. Uh, but I do know that that what's really interesting right now is women are starting to talk about it. And I think that that is amazing because it it is and it can be an emotional experience, uh, but it also, it's a, it's a part of health. It's a part of life and being able to normalize things like miscarriage and just talk about them openly, get the support that we need, but also realize that that this is something that odds are one of your good friends has has gone through. I think that's amazing. And I I am hoping that modern fertility can be a part of building that dialogue and conversation and making those those types of of conversations easier. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get emails a lot about miscarriages, uh, just every term, chemical miscarriages, just every all of these different things that are are happening. And and we tried to to be there as much as we can and also build a, a community of women that are able to to talk about some of these things because it it's something that you you should be able to share openly without feeling bad uh, and just feeling supported. Yeah. yeah. I love that. So I guess for our girls out there, is there beyond the information that you give post-test, would there also be, you know, say it is kind of like, quote unquote, bad news, you know, like where do they go from there? Is there, are there resources for that? Because I can just imagine, you know, finding out that your AMH is like, super low or undetectable, and then you just kind of spiral out of control. So yeah, so we built our whole company with that use case in mind. I think a, a lot of people on our team have interacted with the the medical system in a, a pretty deep way. And we wanted to make sure that we were building an experience that was supporting women and ultimately had their best interest in, in mind. Uh, so the, the important thing to know about these types of, of tests is that your fertility hormones can't tell you if you're infertile or not. There, there's that that's just not possible. Uh, it, it's just more information to use that to make the right decision. So okay. let's say you get your cholesterol tested and your cholesterol is really, really high. That is correlated with a higher degree of having a heart attack tomorrow, but it does not mean that you're going to have a heart attack tomorrow. And so I think that that parallel is really uh, important to keep in mind. I think oftentimes in women's health, it's weird. We like jump to these uh, conclusions, but when we're thinking about you know cholesterol, a lot of men have really high cholesterol, and it's just correlated, and you're getting information, and it's just a part of your routine physical. That's how we should be thinking about your reproductive health and, and fertility hormones. So, what's important to us is when we release these results immediately, um, you have the option included in our, our price point of one hundred and fifty nine dollars, um, even less with your your almost thirty mm-hmm. <laughs> code. Mm-hmm. Uh, y- you get access to a weekly webinar that we call an Aganar that has a a nurse that's live and you can join anonymously and get all of your questions answered. Uh, We also have the ability to speak to a fertility nurse one-on-one and that's included in the price point as well. So really we're hoping that we can give you all the information we can in, in our digital experience that you can access on your terms. But we realize that every woman is different and she might need a different, uh, way and in different support system for for processing this information. Uh, and we also launched a community of modern women, which is focused on giving uh, allowing women to talk about these types of results with with other women. So it's important for us that that she just feels supported in every part of this process yeah. and that we help her understand more about all of these hormones in a way that she can share that information with her doctor. Uh, we have doctor discussion guides and, and a whole uh, list of resources there so that she can have that more informed conversation. That's great. Yeah, I love how thorough modern fertility yeah, is. Same. Thank you. From all angles. The last question for me, what are the factors that outside of if you were to get a test, are yeah. there any factors in lifestyle or in health or in where you live, or in your ethnicity that could determine your fertility? All of the above, (laughs) which is what's really interesting. So there have been fertility studies done on zip code (laughs) and how that correlates with fertility factors. There have been studies that show 
BMI, whether it's really, really high or really, really low, both of those play a role in, in overall fertility. Uh, there have been studies around, you know, I mentioned before, smoking, um, but all of these studies are, are a little bit different. And so oftentimes you're only doing uh, studies on an infertile patient population. So you're only doing these studies on women that are showing up at infertility clinics when they're already having issues, as opposed to a fertile patient population, which is just... Uh, there might be patients that, or women that have infertility within that population. Uh, but it's really important when you're looking at all of this data to understand how to, to process it all. So we really pride ourselves in our clinical team looking at all of that and having really stringent criteria for, for taking that up a level and helping you understand more about where the research is. I would say that there's also a huge need for more research. So the amount of research in women's health is is appalling. It, it's an area that we need to be investing in more. And as a company, uh, we give women option the option to do that. So if you're a modern fertility customer, like you own your data, but you have the option to opt in. Everything is is your choice. You're in charge of your data, but you can opt in to allow your anonymized data to be used to further women's health research. Mm. And that's the type of research that we're doing. We're combining your hormone levels with questions that we might ask you to start to look at these broader insights and do that in a way, package it up and re-deliver it back to you or other women, mm -hmm. <laughs> your potential children. Just We need to move this whole space forward and, and we care deeply about being a part of research there, but in a way that respects that there are some women that, that don't want to be a part of that and that's okay. We're just giving you the option. And so, yes, there there's some really fun research that's out there and we're excited about where, where it needs to go. Wow. So how can our girls, again, I know you mentioned <laughs> in the beginning, how can they find you, take the test and all of that? Yeah. So you can just head to modernfertility.com slash almost 30. You guys, um, we just, we're so excited to to just be talking to you. I think that we did, you guys might have like our, our highest discount ever just because we love you so much and we're obsessed with your community. Thanks. So if you <laughs> you go to modernfertility.com slash almost 30, we, we do have, I believe a $20 off mm -hmm. promo. For us, this is huge. We really, we have razor thin. We, we just are trying to make this test so accessible to everyone. Uh, so so that's something we're, we're just hoping that as many women as, as possible can take advantage of it. Yeah. It is beautiful. We love the branding. Your blog is Thanks. amazing. And I think for a lot of the women in our community that are interested in hormones and fertility and knowing their bodies more, I love that your blog has that disseminated information that is easily um, digestible by you know, women. Um, so modernfertility.com code is almost 30. And this was beautiful. I mean, I learned so much about this and even just getting to know your brand more. I've learned a lot. So I really appreciate it. And it's something that I would have never thought about until you guys. So um, it means a lot that you're here and that we can share this with, you know, our girls because this is the perfect age. We are the perfect target demographic. There's so much changing as far as like health, wellness, you know, in the environment. So it's really good to get a handle on things so that we can be smart about planning our future. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, this, yes. You're welcome. This is this is great. Oh, awesome. Thank you. All right. We love you guys. Thanks for listening. Um, and if you'd like to talk more about this episode and anything else, join our secret Facebook group and we'll see you on the road this year. Yes. We love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much to Afton. And if you want to learn more about modern fertility, you can go to modernfertility.com. Yeah. Hey, you want to hear a review? I would love to. <laughs> I would love to. Thank you guys so much for writing reviews or DMing us or you know being a part of the secret Facebook group or the ambassador program or coming to our events. It, it means so much to Lindsay and I, but it really just means so much to this beautiful community that is growing around almost 30. There are the kindest, coolest funniest women I have ever met in my life at these spaces. And they're so down to support you. So in a not judgmental way, I yeah. just can't, I can't, I can't get enough. That's the whole thing. I trust you guys with everything. Mm -hmm. You know, every time I go to our events or any opportunity that I have to meet some of the people in the community, I just, 
I trust them. I know them. I feel so proud, you know, to be associated with them. And they always do the right thing. They always do the kind thing. They always do the compassionate thing. And the responses that they give to one another in the secret Facebook group is some of the things that I can see on a daily basis happening that are so kind and, and loving. So thank you guys so much for, for doing that for us and for others. This review uh, is from, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I love when people make up really funny. I love that. Freaking names. Uh, it's, I thought I was alone, five stars. I've spent the last 15 years of my life struggling with life transitions as an empath, all too often being told I was just too sensitive and feeling like I must be crazy or that all these things that are important to me must not be to anyone else. I can't even describe the utter relief of listening to you ladies on this podcast and realizing the emotions and hurdles I'm dealing with are okay. And then I am not alone in this crazy Californian world. So sweet. Mm. Yeah. It's the damn truth. Feel that. Feel that. And I was just going to say like the the women don't judge each other because they're really committed to not judging themselves and working working on that. You know, yeah. like that's the it's never, you know, we're all working on that truly because we part. all have our moments. But that's the whole thing is that everyone's committed to just, you know, working on themselves. And then it just translates to like beautiful relationships and connections. Yeah. That part. Woo. Thank you all. Hey, we see love you guys you. on tour and connect with us on Instagram. Almost 30 podcast. I'm at 100 blog on Instagram. Lindsay is Lindsay Simsek. And we would love to be a part of, for you to be a part of our community and are so grateful that you listened to Almost 30 podcast. We love you. We will see you next time. Have a great week. 